Good morning everyone, it's Rachel here and we are doing Roxy's weekly challenge and I am early today because I know exactly what I want to do. So for today you might need some, you can use watercolours or acrylic paints. I'm using my Stamperia paints. Oh, I think that one's a bit metallic, is it? No, my imagination. Um, I only pulled out two colours but I can grab some more colours if I need more. Um, and you can have some ledger paper, book pages, um, you could even do straw paper if you've got some, vintage papers, um, old invoices, uh, let me think, um, or otherwise digitals. So if you don't have this sort of thing, but you might have some ephemera digitals, they will be good as well. So I'm gonna, I am going to work on a little bit of digitals as well. So that one's a good one. Um, and what else did I want to say? Um, if you're going to work on the digitals, then I would recommend using um, <clears throat> acrylic paint, 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 paint. Because unless you've got a laser printer, I don't have a laser printer. Oh, I might try that blue one as well. I don't have a laser printer. So mine's a... a um, I was going to say an acrylic printer. <laughs> um, you can see my brain's working today. Um, mine is a, oh good lord, it's a um, inkjet printer. So if it's too watery, you you might get running in your in your digital. But we'll start with some ledger paper, and what we are going to do is we're going to paint our own labels. And then there's all kinds of variations that you can do on the labels. So um, I'm going to, I can't find my, my die cuts. I think I haven't unpacked them. I think there's some boxes downstairs. So I'm just gonna use these little templates, but sometimes I'm gonna do them freehand as well. I'm not just gonna do them with this. I'm just, don't wanna wait. I don't, I, I don't like wasting my papers. So um, I'm gonna turn that, oh, it's getting stuck on there. Just a sec. So I obviously need a pencil so I can trace it. Um, and I don't do perfectly straight lines um, when I'm doing, when I'm painting them. I'll do another one that way just so we don't waste it. Um, yeah, I don't do perfectly straight lines. That's just a guide for me. But um, we'll do a big one. I just, you know, it just it's just the painterly look. It's just... Another, it's not really to replace any of our digital labels or our stamped labels, but just another fun element to add to something to give it a different look. I've got some oval ones here too. I might, they're, they're a little bit harder to paint, but I'll do those. And I'll tell you what brushes I'm using. We might have a bigger one, a smaller one. Sorry, no. Oh, wait, do I, I want to get that brushing up there. Let's put that over here. And then, and then we'll after this we'll go on to the digital. We might do some freehand ones on there. So um, I've got a few brush. I've got a Filbert brush here, um, and that's a number two. I've got some round brushes. Oh my! Oh, that's a number one, and I think this might be a number two or three. It's a zero. That one's a zero. Yeah. Okay. So they're the brushes I'm using. Clean my fingers off. I've got some paper towel. Bring my paint over. And let's just, because this is, oh, well, no, I don't want to cut it. I won't cut it, sorry. Um, let's just, is that called, that's, I've got my big thing of paint brushes here. I'll just move that over there because I think it was casting a shadow. Okay, am I on screen? Yes, just. Right, I need to have my paper towel over there. So with my acrylic paint, if I were just to use it like that, move it over a bit. If I were just to use it like that, um, it wouldn't flow very well. So I do dip my brush in and just pull it. See, it's just sort of like a nice fluid. If you might have those really expensive ones, Liquitex um, Flow Flow or whatever they're called, they, they would be probably good for this, but you don't, I mean, why would you use expensive paintbrush? paints for this and I twirl my brush around to keep my point there and also to take some of the paint off and now I'm a left-handed person so um, I will have to turn my paper around quite a bit 
otherwise I'll smudge it. So I would start over here um, because you can you see my hand is resting. I have my little finger here, it does um, help me and I just drag my brush. You need to have enough paint on there, drag my brush down to get my line. Without, I try not to lift it, but sometimes I do lift it. And then I totally turn my thing and then drag my brush down. Here we go, it's not too bad. It's when I go in here now, because then I'm going to do double. I want it to be double, of course I do. So. I've got, I'm resting on my little pinky finger. My aunt taught me that. And then just drag, drag even your hand. I don't want to get that into the paint. So hopefully you can see. bit wobbly there because do you know why because I don't have my pinky I forgot to put my pinky down so did you see how wobbly I went but it doesn't matter once they dry and you cut them out they're they're really nice I'm going to do this um round one those over one and these ones I'm going to leave and we'll do them in a different color so we'll give them a chance to dry now this one's a bit harder you will have to stop and start but I try to follow it without lifting but it's a bit hard because I need to turn my paper I might be able to do it. I might. No, I need to come that way. So you need to sort of um, put your brush down also. Like go in the direction that you feel comfortable with too. Like if it's feeling uncomfortable, stop and go the other way. Now, obviously, if I had my die cuts, remember I had those frames that aren't available anymore from Suzix? I think they're down in a box somewhere. That looks like an egg. But there you go. So that's done. We'll put that aside because that does need to dry a little bit. Oh, let's just do, sorry, let's just do a freehand one as well. I'll do a little square one somewhere. Like I might want to, oh no, I'll do a little, little rectangle one. I want to catch, try to catch this word a little bit. It's not hard to do them freehand, especially when they're small. And then I'll just do, well, no, I could do one in another color there. So I'll put that aside to dry because also I don't, the more, um, if I don't wait for it to dry, then, um, you know, I'll be smudging it. So now we're going to grab this one. Oh, I already did that one. I might do that one in a different color. I, I did test it out before I started the video. I'll show you what I did afterwards. Maybe I'm not going to do that one, but these ones that are a little bit lighter, I feel are good. So let's grab this so if you had your die cuts like you had like framed sort of like label sort of shaped die cuts then you could um i think i might put it up there i want a bit of free space in there as well not just all script if you had some um die cuts you could die cut out the papers and which was my original thought but i couldn't find them um, you could die cut some of the papers and and then paint around you know paint the frame that just made it that one so i might use the fill but this one works well as well i've tried that one before make it nice and flowy and not perfect but that's really the whole point of it because like otherwise you can buy ones that are done in the computer that lots of us have or you can stamp them and then they're a little bit more perfect than the hand painted ones there's really not a lot to it And you know, I get thin and thick lines. I'm not too concerned about it. I'm going to do this one. I'm going to press a little bit harder and make a thicker line on this one. I 
haven't put my timer on because this is not a fast process. And then here I might switch my brush and use the thinner one and try and try because it might not happen. Try to have a thinner line. Okay, so I'll let those two dry and we may pull out a different colour. Oh silly me, I put my thing on top of that. Okay, so let's try this blue. I did go and get a few more colours because I do want to do more gently printing too. Oh, that one didn't have a thing on it. Normally they have a little paper in there. Don't need much paint for this either. I'll give everything a wash. Actually, I should have smooshed it around on my piece of paper here. Get the excess paint off. Oh, there's not much on there. Just so you dirty your water a bit less. Okay. So... Oh, well, let's do this one first, and I'm going to put my shapes on. I did already do this one, and it looks really good, so I'm going to... I don't know which of my ephemera kits it's from. Got to be careful not to get things in the paint. But that one... Or did I want to do one? I think I wanted to do one that way. Let's try. Does it fit? No. Okay, I'll do it that way. I didn't I don't think I did a big one on my other one of these. Do one that way. Okay. So we're gonna use the blue. And then, of course, there are all kinds of variations that you can do. I feel like it's a bit blobby, so I'm just putting a bit more water in it. So I do like them with the double. You could also try, if you're really good at it, and you can get a thin and then a thick and then a thin, you can do them triple. I'm not so confident. I think I did one in the beginning like that, but not that confident. As you can see, they're a little bit wonky. Might leave the other two and we'll grab another colour. And then... Let me see what it, let's just do, I would like to do a little few, I'm going to do some, some um, 
just freehand ones here. Square, because I don't have a square template. Might have a long, narrow one there. I'm not going to attempt to do a freehand circle. No. This is a bit of a mess. Um, I have just had a thought though. I could grab this. No, that's really small though, that one. Do I have a bigger one? Um, I'm just trying to see. I don't think I do have a big circle. Or do I? I do have a big one. Just a minute. I've got to get there. Here it is. I rarely use it because it's so big. But what about if I were to punch? Oh, that's huge. Do I want a big circle? You know circles do my head in. So let's just see. Oh, it doesn't even work that well. It's stuck. No wonder I don't use it. Hardly ever used it. Shouldn't do that. Okay. So let me just um, grab my scissors and see if I can tidy that one up a little bit. Well, those circles are nice to use actually I might do a few of those smaller ones they're nice to use also as toppers on top of your tags and things they could actually also be nice as a page tab wonky painting and a wonky circle Very wonky. I may not like this one. I may not do circles like that. I found that quite hard. But I might stamp something in there or something and see what happens. We'll put it aside. We're not going to reject it completely. Um, I'm going to do one more on here. And then I'm going to move, get another colour. And finish off the few bits oh i didn't do any on the i want to go to the ledger i wanted to show you another a little other thing that you can do we'll do a bigger one here i've got a bit too much water okay we'll let those dry and I'm going to come over here and do a couple on this. On this big one, I wanted to show you a little variation that could happen. So I'll do my outline. These are dry now. The nice thing about this paint too is that it dries very quickly. It's very relaxing to do this. As long as you don't get stressed, because your lines aren't perfect. I don't get stressed. I've accepted that about myself, that I am not perfect. I Like I, well, nobody's perfect, but there are people who do things in a much more perfect way. So I want to leave more space in this one. I'm going, because I'm going to decorate in between. So I'm going to try to do it the same. Wendy, this might be up your alley because you're such an incredible painter. Actually, I challenge you, Wendy. I want to see you do them. I want to see the beautiful things that you might do and the variations that you might come up with because you're 
Wendy is an incredible artist. So then I'm going to do little loopies. I think we've all seen stamps like this, with little loopies. You do need to turn your paper around to make it more comfortable. And then I might pull out a few, we won't do like millions of these because you know that just becomes a bit monotonous for you to sit and watch although I would probably fill the whole page um, if I were by myself but um, I'm going yeah I'm gonna stamp I thought I might stamp so I've got some little stamps I might stamp I'm just gonna do a little one in here Of course, then the more you do, then the more sort of maybe variations may pop in into mind. Okay, so itchy eye. I'm going to grab one more colour and just finish off those ones and that other piece of paper there, just to have another go. And I'm going to. I've got a here. Oh, it's all away over there. Just a sec. Let's see what other colour I didn't pull out any red. Red would be nice. Um, what about my favourite colour, which is this this bluey green? We'll try that one. I mean, I mean, the possibilities are endless of the colours that you can use. Just give it a good old shake. Close that. And I will, after the video, sit and finish off these colours. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? Haha, <laughs> swatching. That's always a good option. And these colours work really well together, I think. And I've got a, a yellow one in the bag too. I might add that, a buttery yellow. Okay, so let's just um, clean off the brushes. Oh, that's clean. I didn't use it. Which brush did I use? This one. No. Oh, I already cleaned my brush. Okay, cool. <laughs> right, so I'm going to use this brush. This is the zero. much paint on there just give it a twirl in your paint this is obviously going to be more subtle very pretty oh I love these You don't have to do them double, but I just feel like it just gives them a bit more if they, if they are double. I love this colour, especially on the vintage paper. And as I said, you can use vintage invoices. You can use scan stuff because we're not putting too much um, paint on there. So this is a printable, obviously, and not too much paint is going on. So... Well, water, I'm saying, I mean water, so it doesn't do anything to it, it doesn't bleed.
Okay, I've gone quiet because I'm concentrating and my mind is wandering to our eco printing day that we'll be having a week on Tuesday. Okay. I probably won't use it, but not to waste this little piece down here. I'm going to do a little one. So much fun. Okay. So, was I going to do anything else? No, they're drying. So I'm going to bring over the ones that I already did. And they're already dry. And we can cut those out. Oh, swatching. Let's do some swatching quickly while there are others. Let's just, sorry, let's just get that done. Um, so that way I can um, not waste my paint. Well, what brush will I use? This one. I did say that you can use acrylic paint too for your swatching. I don't use it too thick. I'll do a few. We did that last week. Um, and then I'm going to grab. So then you can it's the same principle as the other one. I just mix the colors. To get them to work together. I could then go and have, I don't have a lot of space here, so I think I'll go into the lighter color and do it just, it's just a three. When they dry, they are just lovely. I really love the acrylic swatching as well. And then I'm just going to clean my brush off. Because then this under paper will become something as well. So then I want to do, let me just grab a bigger one. So you do really need to make sure you work hard to get your variation in colour because otherwise it all looks like just a swatching of the same colour. So I can have a bit more blue in there and then I can, well I might put another one there because I'll do two. I've got a lot of paint on there so I don't want to waste it. Down here and do another one. Because oh. I need to clean it off because then I do want the lighter colour. Put just a tiny bit of that colour in it. Oh, lovely. So this is me not wasting my paints. Um, and then I need to go backwards and do the more colour. Go into the green, which is nearly finished. A bit more, a bit more blue in there. Oh my gosh, it's so relaxing. I almost like the um, acrylic swatching more than... No, I love the watercolour one too. I shouldn't say that. I do love the watercolour one. And that's that. We've still got a bit of paint here. Um, well, I'll do another one. blue and 
a bit of a pale blue, more pale blue in there. Actually, I can add another one there. I'll add a bit more of that in there. And then I'll grab that there. Okay, so look at that. And then with this blue, I've finished, nearly finished the other colours. I'm just going to do some... Let's see what happens if I use a thick brush and do a label. Let's see what happens. I've got way too much water in there. Then I might come back in with a thin brush. Put a little one in here. Love that color. Okay. Come back in with a thinner brush. Okay, and one other thing I wanted to do that I haven't done before is I just wanted to um, see what would my swatching look like on a digital. Very nice. Like that. Don't have any of that left. I need some green. Cool. Okay, well, I'll let that dry. And that can even be used. Okay, so we're done with the paint, I think. So I'm going to cut out cut out these two put those aside to dry these are dry so you just cut these out as you would any other label snip my corners That is lovely and it's the excitement of when because they look you know they really take on their look once you've cut them out it's the excitement of that isn't it you don't know what it's going to look like until you cut it out okay where are my other ones these will be dry. So obviously I can do more with that piece of paper. So I'm going to try and keep the bits. Put that over there. It's always fun to find new ways to use your digitals too. That is a little bit different to the norm. How did I get this idea? Well, I was looking on, um, you know how you can 
in on Instagram you can um, just sort of go hit that little what is it the little funny shape it's like a not not a toggle like a magnifying glass or something no I can't remember what the symbol is and you can just see their suggestions and um, I came across this page of this lady that had done you know and we've done that before the stamping of labels and I don't know it just flew into my head oh, I want paint some that was what came into my head I want to do painted ones so and then I thought oh we can do those on the digitals as well because I think that'd look really cool and look at these these are going to be gorgeous and I am just always snipping my just snip a bit more off there my corners I think I snipped a bit of my frame but anyway oops very crooked very bad cutting but very bad painting as well so the painting leads to bad bad, bad painting leads to bad cutting okay I won't cut them all out but I do want to see them I'll leave those two there. They can be cut out afterwards because you get the idea. That one and then what else did I have? Oh, these ones. And I'll cut out a few green ones and then we've got our ledger paper over there. So these ones were actually, that's what they were in the digital and I just put the frames around them. And this one I did three, which is a little bit harder than just doing two. So that, that, that was, ex I just went around the edge of the actual printable on those ones. And here I did the loopy. So that has to be snipped like that. cut out this oval one and that little square one here I won't cut out all of those because we've got some already cut out I think sometimes when I snip the corners off too it could just be my imagination but it sort of camouflages the wonkiness of it all So this one I've got to be a little bit careful. Not the best, most fun shape to cut out. That'll do, not too bad. And then, they're still drying a bit, but we're going to cut out a few of these. move these all out of the way over there move the water over there okay and then we'll get rid of this sheet oh I'll keep that I'll, I'll do one on that one look it's got on that side I'll use these sometime during the week. Okay, 
okay and then this oh this is not fun try not to move my scissors but move the paper there we go that'll do okay so let's move this paper out of the way just because it's probably causing us a bit of distraction put it over there and carefully not drop my mess on the floor and I wanted to have a look at oh, uh, at stamping so I'm just going to grab a couple of things so get, get a few little things happening today um, poster I'm just going to pull out a few stamps I don't like doing that because then I have to put them all away but anyway here we go um, there's some little butterflies and bees in this one too and let's just have a look at it so you could even stamp them before you oh, let's just I think I cleaned my brushes so they can go back in the thing I'll just put the palette out of my way as well and I just wanted to grab my book. I've got a few more that I cut out when I was just testing it out here. They're on ledger paper. So I can put my stamps over here. Right. Let's see. I've got brown here. We'll do brown. Especially on the green. So let's find. Oh, I love that bee. Let's do this bee. I'll show you. Look at that bee. I need to get some more ink on it. And see which one will I put it on. I won't stamp, wouldn't stamp all of them, actually. What I'm gonna like it. Oh my tummy's rumbling. I'm gonna do half the bee. I'll do it over here. See what happens. There we go. Well, it's okay. Um, I could do the bee in there. No, let's get something smaller. What's this one? Oh, little teeny tiny bee. Let's do that one. Oh, yes, I like that. So that could be like a tab on something. I think on this one I might put just... A little bit of an, some 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 sort of blah, 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 can't speak some sort of numbers on it down here. That's better. Okay. Oh, so much fun. This one. Butterflies. Oh, I might like a bug. I think I'd like to do it in blue. I need to get my um maybe not on that one though because it's too big the actual label could do this on this one. Oh, it looks like it's it's got it's um not working anymore but i'll try it i've just got to grab i have other things stuck on it but we'll just ignore those I'll put it on here that'll do let's see if it test it out and see if it still works It does oh nice I actually really like this bug very nice I don't think I'll put anything on that one it's a bit small this was on the printable um, what else do I have here don't even have half my stamps in there I 
what about I don't think I want script in it I think I'm going to put oh I think I'll put this one in here this was from some French company I don't know I bought it many years ago and I don't I doubt that it's even still available anymore let's see make sure I've got to get enough ink on it but you get the idea you don't have to stamp all of them and I am going to put a little bit of a number as well just to give it a bit more interest and maybe that number over there oh yes that's it so I'm not going to stamp all of them but that's my sort of idea for the stamping part so we can put these all away put the bug back on where it belongs on there and it is still working so I'm pleased about that number over there and let's just grab some sort of I've got some I keep trying to close that drawer but I've got things sticking out of it um, I just want to see over here if I had nope I've got this this is in incomplete it's just on a beautiful old piece of um, rag paper and maybe I could have a little like I could have something little down here not that color see that I'm not going to put the green on the green um, let's see what else I have so you could make it a little bit like a sort of file folder sort of thing and have a little tear or oh, like that so I could glue that on there let's do that and of course I'll have to glue something on the other side but it needs some writing paper in there it's meant to be like a little excuse me a little journaling spot but already I can use this little um, label and I have to back it but I'm going to wait I'm just going to put my writing paper first So just to give you a little idea how I might use them. Need to wipe that off. Got glue everywhere. will dry and I need to put something on that side so let me see I could maybe take this I'll glue that on and then trim it down Okay, so I made a little tab on there, and then um, I've got some writing paper in there, but we need something else here. So I'm just going to my box of papers here, Let's see what I've got. my quilting ruler use this one better
just keeping it simple just so just to finish it off really and I'm going to tear it here side I'm thinking I might put something like that Steph did um, write on the back of this one it was when he was asking me he was putting the, the digitals together and, and he was asking me what else do I need to put on the thing and and he sort of done drawn little, little boxy things to for the um, you know the layout that's what I'm trying to say because it's some, sometimes I struggle because it's coming to me in Italian in paginazione it was coming to me in Italian and it wasn't coming to me in English so I do struggle at times and then when I speak English uh, when I speak Italian sometimes I struggle there as well so I'm really in limbo land between the two languages bit of glue there that's what's bothering me like you know the really hard glue when they because they glue the books to keep them together so here we've got a little journaling spot There's a little um, label on there and then at the back and at the back let me see I mean I just love that I'm gonna put it there I wouldn't normally maybe do two hand painted ones on one piece because you know that's a bit of work isn't it but I do really like that on there. So I'm going to put that there. So there we go. That's how we um, I would use them as regular labels or as decorative elements on something. So I hope you enjoyed that video. Have a great weekend. and Oh, have a great Friday first and then a great weekend. And um, I will see you again soon. Bye.